You're listening to the Life with Old Dogs podcast, and I'm your host, Dawn Mimna, primary caretaker of all of our wonderful senior German Shepherds right here at Woody's Place Senior German Shepherd Sanctuary. Hey there, folks. Welcome back to the Life with Old Dogs podcast. Um, We are still covering the top 20 most common health issues found in senior German Shepherds. And this week we are discussing number 10, uh, the ins and and outs of diabetes mellitus. Um, It's a metabolic disease that um, can be found in senior German Shepherds. So older German Shepherds are at a higher risk for developing diabetes mellitus. Uh, Diabetes mellitus is similar to type 1 diabetes in humans, and that's where the pancreas doesn't produce enough insulin, which results in high blood blood glucose. There we go. Spit it out there, Dawn. Okay, and it is the most common type of diabetes in older German Shepherds. Um, So if you have an older German Shepherd, okay, that's eight years and older, they become seniors around the time they're eight, geriatric around the time they're 10. So if you have an older German Shepherd, it's important for you to be aware of the signs and symptoms of diabetes. Um, That way you can get your fur friend the treatment he needs as soon as possible. Um, The sooner the better. And the condition is treatable. All right. It's it's uh it's it's how can I say this? So if if your dog is diagnosed with diabetes, um, life is definitely going to be different and maybe not as smooth sailing as if he didn't have diabetes. But it is treatable and it is manageable to the point where your dog will still have quality of life so long as he is diagnosed correctly and treated properly for diabetes. All right, so let's just jump right into it. What causes diabetes in senior German Shepherds? Uh, So as I mentioned, older German Shepherds are more prone to diabetes, uh, developing diabetes than their younger counterparts, because uh, as they age, their body's ability to produce insulin decreases. And also because as they age, uh, perhaps they have arthritis, um, just not feeling as active as they once were, That, but that's it. They become less active, uh, which could lead to weight gain. So um, so there you go. It's, it's kind of like a trifecta. Um, their body produces uh, less insulin. They have a tendency to become less active and they gain weight. Um, sounds like people, right? <laughs> it's not too far off. But that, that's not the only reason that older German Shepherds could potentially be um, stricken with diabetes. There are other factors, and some of those factors could be genetics. Uh, poor, poor genes could, could lead to diabetes um, early or later in life for German Shepherds. Okay, so uh, that being said, if you decide you're going to get a German Shepherd and you choose not to adopt, you darn well better know the breeder inside and out and make sure that um, there is no trace of diabetes in the gene line anywhere. Um, All right, let's see. Other factors for which older German Shepherds may develop diabetes are, oh, yes, here we go, underlying autoimmune diseases um, or having illnesses such as Cushing's disease and hypothyroidism. I mean, that's nuts, right? (laughs) And I say that's nuts because (laughs) hypothyroidism is like so darn easy to treat. And if left untreated, you know, could lead to diabetes. Uh, and finally, some medications such as steroids um, could play into a diagnosis of diabetes. So you need to be aware of that as well. Um, and we will talk about 
thyroidism, hypothyroid disease, hypothyroidism. Um, I think that might even be that might even be the last of the top twenty health issues we discuss um, in senior German shepherds. But you know, folks, the thyroid. I'm just going to touch base on this real quick. The thyroid, it it just it pretty much controls the body, and um, if you're not aware of how your your uh, dog's thyroid is functioning. It could be totally wreaking havoc on on his body. So um, it's always a good thing to have checked. Um, you know, if you have a senior German Shepherd, you should at least be going to the vet once a year for a, a uh, senior blood panel and a full workup, urinalysis, stool check, CB, CBC, all that stuff, and have the thyroid checked out as well. All right, but we'll we'll talk more about that in the final episode of of um, this season, thyroid disease. That is all right. So, uh, what are the signs of diabetes in senior German shepherds? Uh, there's quite a few. There's I, I listed sixteen. Um, some are some are obviously in the beginning of diabetes, and some are um, as diabetes left untreated goes. For, uh, progresses. So um, <clears throat> we have excessive drinking. And let me just say real quick here, these symptoms, they, they could be related to other things too, but you need to pay attention because if your dog is exhibiting any of these symptoms, especially multiple symptoms from this list, um, get your dog to the vet sooner rather than later to have them checked out. All right. So symptoms of diabetes, excessive drinking, excessive eating, Frequent urination, uh, having your having accidents in the house. They're peeing on the floor, and they they haven't you know ever done that before. Um, urinary tract infections. Uh, they're eating excessively, yet they're still losing weight. Um, their their coat their coat's dull. It's just not as shiny and looks rather um, dirty. Uh, sweet smelling breath. Lack of energy vomiting, poor vision, which can include but is not limited to cloudy eyes and cataracts, lack of coordination, uh, neurological issues such as lack of coordination, um, but also including seizures, collapsing, shock, and coma. So that's that's pretty serious there, folks. And like I said, these some of these symptoms... Um, could could mean other illnesses and diseases, but if your your dog is exhibiting any of these sixteen um, <clears throat> symptoms, please get him to the vet as soon as possible to have him him uh, checked out fully to rule out diabetes. Okay, so that's the next thing. Now, how is canine diabetes diagnosed? So you've you've made your appointment, you've seen symptoms, you've made your appointment with your vet because you're concerned. So you get your older German shepherd into your vet, you go over your concerns with your vet, you have a list of the symptoms that that your dog has been exhibiting and hopefully how long and how often you've seen the symptoms. I definitely keep a list of those things and I hope you would too this way um you you could actually pinpoint when something started and be able to relay that to your to your your vet. All right, so she's listening to your concerns uh, while performing a thorough examination of your dog, um, this examination will most likely include a, a full once-over, full full physical, touchy-feely physical, listening to the heart, looking in the eyes, looking in the ears, actually um, uh, feeling your dog um, tip to tail. And um, <clears throat> it will also include a, a blood test, a full blood panel, a urinalysis, and like I said, most likely a fecal if you if you bring that with you. I, I do. <laughs> um, so the urinal, the blood test and the urinalysis um, will show the levels of the glucose in the blood and if his pancreas is producing enough insulin. Uh, testing will also help determine if there is any underlying issue, like I mentioned before, such as Cushing's or hypothyroidism. hypothyroidism. Also, at that time, your vet should test to determine if there has been any organ damage, if any, due to the di due to diabetes, perhaps um, 
not being detected soon enough. So maybe um, maybe you weren't able to pick up on cues, um, symptoms and signs soon enough, uh, sooner rather than later. And um, and so as diabetes untreated goes on, it starts to begin to damage the, the kidneys, the heart, the liver. And um, testing can determine whether uh, that has happened, whether that has started to happen, damage to the organs. So that should be um, be tested for as well during this physical examination. All right, let's talk about treatment for diabetes. So treatment depends on the severity of the diabetes. Now, I'm not saying treatment's not going to happen at all, but I am just saying the treatment depends on the severity of the diabetes. If diabetes is caught early enough, um, your vet may instruct you to change your dog's diet. Um, you know, maybe you're feeding some commercial brand diet. It's it's not the best. Maybe it's loaded with with carbs. Um, so your your vet would instruct you to incorporate a diet for your dog that has fewer fewer carbs. You know, low glycemic index, um, and a diet that had an I'm sorry, fewer carbs, lower glycemic index. I have that in parentheses. Um, less fillers and whatnot. And uh, incorporate a diet that has more fiber, but not too much because you don't want too much fiber in your dog's diet because then it starts to ferment in their intestines and they'll stink you out of the room. Uh, but definitely some fiber, but you know there has to be a balance there. And also uh, meat protein, All right? Definitely meat protein protein, um, and hopefully a variety of meat protein, lean meat protein, I should say. Um, also, you'll probably be instructed to incorporate um, fewer, if you, you're big on giving your sna- uh, your dog snacks throughout the day, you'll probably be instructed to incorporate fewer, but healthier snack options throughout the day. So what do I mean by healthy snack options? Well, I'm not talking about commercial treat crap like milk bones in a box because that's probably how your dog got to where he is now. I hate to say that, but it it could be true. Um, I'm talking about things like dehydrated meat. Um, So the Woody's Place gang here, they're they're huge on snacks. They love snacks. (laughs) Um, And I give them a variety of snacks, not just one type of snack. We don't have any, any residents here with diabetes. So I can be a little flexible with their diet, um, but one of their main sources of snacks throughout the day is uh, dehydrated meat. We do a lot of beef liver, um, chicken uh, organs. I'll dehydrate them. I have a dehydrator here, and I will dehydrate them. Um, lamb lung, that's another thing. And then so it, 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 it I can also buy that. Um, in in a tractor supply, I believe has it. Sometimes it's made in America. I make sure it's made in America. Uh, so if I am going to buy it, um, that's the the I want the source to be from America. Um, and basically, it's dehydrated, and then it it gets broken up into smaller like. Um, nibble size pieces and the dogs here, the residents here absolutely love it and it's good for them. So um, again, uh, less treats throughout the day and the treats have to be a healthier option such as dehydrated meat. You can also do vegetables if the, if your dog likes vegetables and some fruits, some fruits, but I would I would probably stick with vegetables. All right. Additionally, uh, the vet will most likely, (laughs) strongly suggest um, incorporating an exercise routine into your older German Shepherds, but not, not, too rigorous like you're obviously you're going to have to try to increase your your older german shepherds uh exercise throughout the day and and that that can be hard because they could have other things going on like like some sort of elbow or hip dysplasia or arthritis and you know they're hurting so they really don't want to get up and do too much um but even even a few small steps you know a few few little steps around the backyard several times a day adds up. Um, I, I've mentioned this before. We we are huge on short but frequent walks here at the sanctuary, and it varies depending on the weather. 
um, and what's going on that day. Um, but typically, a, a day for us um, looks like all of the all the residents go out with me first thing in the morning. Now we we have acres here, so and it's all fenced in. <laughs> the rest of it, thanks to you, fine folks, um, who donated for the fencing. But we have acres here, so <clears throat> they're not on a leash except for Nona. And they can go pretty much wherever they want at their own pace. Um, 99.9% of the time, they're glued to me. So they'll go wherever I go. Um, and so when when we go out first thing in the morning, I have to, I'm in my pajamas still. <laughs> I have my pajamas on. I have my winter coat on and my muck boots on, a hat and gloves. And we go out the back door and we go through the dog yard, which is fenced in. And then we go out to the chicken and goat field, which is about another acre that's all fenced in for the chickens and the goats. And we start getting all the food together, replenishing water, getting hay set and all that stuff before I release the chickens and the goats from their buildings out into the yard. So the dogs, the residents are all with me and they're doing whatever they want, whatever they can do. Um, Sometimes some of them will just go back in the house. They'll go back. uh, We have a dog door as well. So and that's open. And oftentimes, actually, I might be taking too long or it's too cold or whatever. And Atticus and Brandy, actually, it's typically them. They'll just turn around and go right back inside. They've had enough. And that's that. Um, The other three right now in in our care, uh, Savvy, Nona and Prince, they they are with me from the beginning to the end. Um, <clears throat> okay, so we do that. That's about 20 minutes. Then when I'm finished that, um, I actually start taking the dogs for a walk. Now that's around the rest of the sanctuary grounds. We have, um, we have other fields and we have woods that we can walk through and there's nice trails through the woods. So Nona, Prince, and Atticus, or um, Nona, Prince, and Savvy are with me every single time. They'll walk around. If I walk five times around, they're walking five times around. If I'm walking two times around, they're walking two times around. But anyway, I'm going down this rabbit trail here. Um, they'll they'll walk. They get they get plenty of walks in. Uh, then we're typically out again a couple of hours later, making a couple of laps around the trails. Um, then you know maybe like three hours might pass, four hours might pass, and then we're out again doing it again. We will do that two more times typically before the end of the day. So they get plenty of walks in. Um, sometimes, like I said, sometimes Brandy doesn't want to go. She's our super senior. She has elbow dysplasia. Um, she also, I believe, has doggy dementia at this point. She gets a little disoriented. Um, Brandy walks around whenever Brandy wants to walk around, but I don't make her. But I still do make her get up at least twice a day and come out and walk a little bit with me just to get her exercise. Because if I, I don't make her, she'll she'll pretty much just try to lay all day long and then at nighttime rolls around, then she starts sundowning because she's confused because she slept all day. So um, if they can't walk a whole lot, they still have to get up and walk some, all right? So just short, frequent movements throughout the day. Uh, if your German Shepherd, your older German Shepherd just can't handle a whole lot, all right? And we're not doing a whole lot of rigorous exercise anyway, because that could lead to uh, spikes and dips in blood sugar, right? So it's just nice, calm, easy exercise, nothing too vigorous, right? And that should keep them active, help hopefully a little more alert, and keep um, the weight in check. All right. Now, if your if your older German Shepherd has been diagnosed with diabetes and the disease has progressed to the point where merely changing his diet and ramping up his exercise routine doesn't do the trick, then he's going to need medication to control his blood sugar along with the necessary diet um, diet change and increased exercise. Now, in terms of medication, uh, sometimes oral medication might be subscribed or prescribed, yes, yeah, subscribed, prescribed to um, to control hypoglycemia. Uh, but statistically, oral medications don't work as well. Like metformin for people really doesn't work for for dogs. Uh, so, 
insulin injections will most likely be the way to go. But that is a conversation you would need to have with your veterinarian to determine the best course of action for your fur friend. Okay, um, another aspect to the treatment plan is addressing any underlying issues. So we've we've talked about this um, just a few minutes ago. So if your if your dog, if your senior German Shepherd has Cushing's disease or an underactive thyroid, that needs to be addressed as well. And people, an underactive thyroid is one pill, and it's only like thirty bucks a month for your dog to take it twice daily. Really, it's not a big deal at all. We've had we've had it several times here at the sanctuary. Okay, and last but certainly not least, uh, making sure your fur friend receives the correct treatment at the correct time of day and keeping his diet and exercise routine consistent is crucial for his health and well-being. So you have to be sure you are following your vet's instructions to a T. Okay, if you're giving insulin injections to your dog once or twice a day, like you need to do it before rather than after feeding your fur friend, and that that can have serious consequences. Okay, so you need to be sure you fully comprehend your vet's instructions on how and when to give the insulin and how and when he should eat as well as what he can and and can't eat. All right. So, um I think what what I would do actually, uh, first of all, let me just say this. We we've we've never had a resident here with diabetes in the history of Woody's place Knockwood. Okay? But if if I was to have a resident here with diabetes, um I actually might put the recorder on my phone when I'm in the veterinarian's office and record her giving me the instructions for how to care for the resident with diabetes, like when to give the insulin, how much, um, at what times, you know, the list of foods they can have, the list of foods they shouldn't have, um, all, all of that stuff. And now, our, of course, our vets are fantastic where they write it all down and they give it to me. They don't write it down. It's actually typed up and um, um, typed nice and neat on on uh, release um, release documents for me to have. But I still would actually record it on my phone as well in the event that I somehow misplace the um, the documents that um, – that we leave with, with all the instructions on it. And, and if I was ever in doubt, I would be on the phone with my vet, no matter what, (laughs) making sure I, you know, was, was doing it 100% accurately. So I didn't mess anything up. Um, And insulin is, it's serious business. So again, you, you have to know when to give it or how much to give it. And, um, what to look for, like injections, you know, I mean, I, I have goats that I have to give injections to uh, several times a year. And sometimes, I mean, sometimes it's just a real crap show because here, you know, they're jumping all over the place and I've got them tied down as best as I can or in their milk stand and, you know, they really can't go anywhere, but they're still squirming all over the place. And I've given injections where I didn't even give them the injection. It actually went into their fur and not into their body. So, you know, that's something to really think about um, that you're giving it to to your dog accurately. Um, I, I think now they have uh, something that's that's like an insulin pen and you dial the dose that you want to give and basically you just hold the, the pen device up to your dog and then it just pushes the um, pushes the insulin in to your dog. So that, that would be a whole lot better than an actual um, syringe injection. <laughs> Sign me up for that. That would be better. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, yeah, so that's, that's, that's the, the most important thing is making sure you are, you are following your veterinarian's instructions to a T for how to um, care for your senior German Shepherd with diabetes. All right. And the prognosis for senior German Shepherds with diabetes, it's, it's sad to say, but there, there is no cure for diabetes, um, but with proper treatment, as I was just discussing from your veterinarian, 
Um, and, you know, you being the the senior German shepherd mom or dad, you would you would need to have an eagle eye. But um, but you two working together as a team and doing whatever it takes to keep your fur friend happy and healthy, um, he's he's going to go on to live a relatively normal life um, as long as the diabetes is managed. So, um, all right, that's it. That's all I have for diabetes. That's all I have for this week. Um, just wanted to let you all know Again, that in season three of the Life with Old Dogs podcast, we're covering the top 20 uh, most common health issues in senior German Shepherds. So be sure to subscribe to our newsletter to get all that um, free, valuable information delivered right to our inbox. I will make sure to put um, all that information in the show notes here in the podcast. So basically, to subscribe, you would go to our website, uh, WP. PSGSS.org. You would scroll down about halfway and look for the join our mailing list postcard and you would fill that out. And then you'll get our our newsletter, the Life with Old Dogs newsletter. And that typically comes out weekly. Um, sometimes I sometimes I might miss a week, but it's typically out weekly. Um, and it, it fills you in on what's going on around here at the sanctuary and then what's uh, what's being sold in the shepherd shop that supports the sanctuary um, and other things. Um, right now, covering these these health uh, 20 most common health issues. Oh, and it also talks about if there's any events coming up, which, you know, we haven't really done any events because of, you know, the whole COVID thing. <laughs> I don't really think we'll be doing any uh, fundraiser events until the end of March. Hopefully things will be looking a little better then. But anyway, um, our fur friends don't live forever. You know, none of us do, right? Uh, But as your German Shepherd ages, it's important to know the typical ailments your fur friend can suffer from and how to navigate the waters if something does come up. So instead of being blindsided and feeling helpless when and if something does come up, um, we want to help you, provide you with this information. So at the end of season three of the Life with Old Dogs podcast and blog post, uh, which are are correlated um, for this, this season... Uh, We will be sending you the entire season's worth of information that we cover in the 20 most common health issues of senior German Shepherds. We will send that to you for free in an ebook for you to have for your own reference. Okay, that is everything we are covering from number one to number 20 of the top 20 most common health issues for senior German Shepherds. We will send you that in a ebook, a PDF format, so you could keep it on your computer, your smartphone, your tablet, and look at it whenever you want. Or you can print it all out and put it in a binder and have it on hand and you can share it with whoever you want. It's not, um, you know, I'm not not, uh, saying, oh, it's just for you and you can't share it with anybody else. I'm totally fine with that. All right. So be sure to subscribe because it's only subscribers who are going to get that free PDF ebook at the end of season three. All right, folks, uh, it, it's, it's been a long week, and I'm tired, <laughs> and I'm sitting here in the back room, and all the dogs are just, they're all tucked in. Atticus is on the sofa. Savvy and Nona are, are on big Barker dog beds, um, as is Prince. Little Miss Brandy's out in the living room with the cats in Mr. Woody's place. <laughs> um, and I'm just, I'm tired. I'm tired and I'm I'm sick of winter in Northeast PA. <laughs> I just want to hibernate. Uh, but anyway, um, yeah, warmer days are coming. In the next few weeks, I'm going to start um, uh, growing some produce here. We have a very large grow tent in my master bedroom. So if you've ever seen videos, you see this floor to ceiling black, like it almost looks like a little room um, or sauna. And actually, it's a floor to ceiling grow tent uh, with UV lights inside of it and everything. And I grow, I start my my garden inside there, um, get my seeds going and all that stuff. But I, I grow lettuce in there also, um, and other quick producing vegetables so that when it gets to be, you know, this time of year, uh, we have f- fresh vegetables on him. I haven't really started 
or, or push too much to do it this year because last year I had the biggest garden of my entire life here at the sanctuary and and the garden is for for us but it's also for the the Woody's Place residents because I home cook as you know a lot for these dogs so there's they get produce as well um but I had the biggest garden of my entire life last year and I I can I dehydrate and I I freeze a lot so we're still we still have a lot of um produce left that we're still using like green beans Oh my gosh, I am so sick. Well, bush beans, I am so sick and tired of looking at them <laughs> and eating them. <laughs> but the dogs don't mind and it's healthy for them. So I'm going to start that soon and that'll make me think of spring and then we'll get out of this uh, winter blues funk. <laughs> All right, folks, until next time, be well. Mm-hmm.